Hi, everyone, and welcome to another episode of HCA's What to Stream. My name is Morgan, and I am so excited to be sharing three awesome films and short films with you today. We are joined by Lupe, our co-host in crime. Hello, hello. everyone. Thank you. Oh, Thank hello. You. <laughs> so we have, um, yeah, I'll, I'll start off with a movie. Well, actually, it's a series on HBO Max that I started earlier this week and absolutely loved and binge watched. So yeah, I hope you will do the same if you haven't already. This series is called Q, um, Into the Storm. Q Into the Storm on HBO Max. And basically this is a six part documentary series that goes into the mysterious world of Q and QAnon and its impact on society, on politics, on the world as we know it. It's very interesting. Um, if you are fans of Succession, which I love, my favorite show maybe of all time, definitely of recent times, this has a similar feeling to it because it is executive produced by Adam McKay, who also executive produced Succession. Um, this film, it or this series, it took about three years to create and the director, Colin Holbeck, he, goes all over the country, gathering really interesting interviews with the founders of 8chan, the founder of 4chan, and just how this anonymous Q person became this global figure and brainwashed essentially thousands or millions of Americans into thinking that there was this government secret agent that had mysterious information and that was kind of ruling the world. And um, it's a very interesting documentary for sure. I mean, you see this guy on the screen, that's just one of the, the few QAnon loyalists and patriots as they call themselves. It's very interesting. Yeah, each episode runs about an hour and there are six parts and I absolutely loved it. It definitely is maybe one of the most horrifying things I've ever seen just because of the content and what it is but it's good to know. And it's interesting to see how people can be brainwashed through social media and through, yeah, other the, the opinions and uh, tweets of others. So I hope you enjoy. Have you seen this, Lupe? Or have you heard about it? No, it's on my list because I'll be talking about another series that I uh, binged and then I remembered it was on there and everybody was talking about it. Mm -hmm. I'm on Facebook and um, it sounds uh, interesting. It sounds, you know what it sounds like, even though I haven't watched it, you know, in The Handmaid's Tale, you find out I think oh. by the third season that this man, he didn't mean to start this movement. Like it was purely accidental. He was just theorizing. Yeah. He wasn't really meaning for it to be this kind of a society. So now he's helping the women escape because right. it was sort of a, mis a mistake. So this is what this sounds like. Somebody just decided, hey, I'm gonna throw this out there and see if it sticks. Totally, yeah. like behind a, a veil of anonym, anonymity. Mm -hmm. Anonymous, yes, he's anonymous. Um, <laughs> although, what's interesting is that towards the end of the series, you can kind of guess who Q is, which mm. is very shocking. And I feel like that's maybe the most profound thing that's come out in the news lately is you can kind of surmise by the end who this person is, and it's not who you would expect. So I'll leave it at that. It's very interesting, mm. highly recommend. It's like, who's behind the curtain? Exactly. Pulling the little <laughs> screen. <laughs> exactly. Okay, so now I'm talking uh, them coming to Amazon Prime mm. on the 9th, which is Friday. Well, by the time you watch this, it'll be the next day. And it's an anthology series. Um, it's a horror anthology series. It's from Little Marvin, who created the show, and Lena Waif is a producer on it. And it's really, really, really heavy stuff. Um, it's basically, it's set in the 1950s. And this family, the Emery's, they moved from North Carolina, very Jim, uh, Jim Crow South um, to Los Angeles, specific, specifically the Compton area. And it's an all white neighborhood, they bring them in. And it's a little hard, this show is heartbreaking um, to see what families had to go through. And this Emery family, uh, 
So they moved to Compton and it's during a period called the Great Migration. A lot of people from the South moved to the East Coast and the West Coast thinking life would be better um, on the coast. But little to my surprise, and you know, a lot of people will watch the show and learn, there were a lot of tactics used to keep black families out of certain certain areas. And so this family moves in, and of course, all the white families are against the couple moving there. And there's a reason why real estate companies are moving them in. It's such an interesting story. It's to bring the prices down of homes. And so, I mean, this is based on reality. It's um, it's historical. Uh, people in the east and east and west coast they started to employ uh, tactics that they use in the south to intimidate uh, black families and black individuals. And so they did that here in um, in Los in the Los Angeles area. And you have uh, Allison Pill, who's on Star Trek Picard. She is the neighbor. Her name is Betty. And wow, what a performance. You really dislike her by the end. I had to, I interviewed her uh, two weeks ago and I told her, I said, you know what? I'm really, it's really hard to interview you because <laughs> you did such a good job. I mean, she is terrible, <laughs> but they give her, you know, by the fourth episode, they give her, uh, a, you give the viewer a reason to be empathetic, but still it doesn't excuse her, her behavior. And so it's really, really, a tragic, tragic story. These Emery's, they move in and they just use tactics like burning crosses, uh, black faced dolls um, hung on their porch where the kids can see them. So like I mentioned, it is based on um, on the history and the ugly history in America, but also they add a supernatural um, boogeyman as well. So the kids and the family, the Emery's, they start to be haunted by this supernatural entity and now you have no idea who it is. And it's going to drive me crazy not knowing who it is, and then you know maybe uh, skipping to the end of the of the show, the episodes to see who this person is. But basically, this show it really takes a sledgehammer Hmm, I don't know. It's supernatural. Did you get taken away? I know it's supernatural. Woo! <laughs> there I am. But yeah, it's a sledgehammer are. to what we can imagine from the 50s, this idyllic neighborhood, you know, leave it to Beaver, June Cleaver. Mm -hmm. When you first see them, that's the image that you get. Oh, June Cleaver type women. But then it just turns ugly. So, I mean, it really takes a sledgehammer to that genre and like totally um, kills that, that that image we had of idyllic 50s society. It wasn't, you know, the, so it gets behind the ugly truth of what, what goes on. And we've all heard about redlining mm -hmm. um, and banks, the loan practices for, from the banks for um, African-Americans, for Hispanic, Latinos, for Asian Americans. I mean, it was pretty ugly. And I talked to the creator, Little Marvin, and he said it's based, some of it is based on true facts. Like these are some of the scare tactics that they use here in Los Angeles, I grew up in Los Angeles and I knew about white flight um, because in my, where I grew up, my mom, when she moved in in the 60s, she said it was basically all white, but then they left. And now it's a, you know, it's a mostly Latino families that live there. So I understood that part, but I never understood the tactics used in some of the neighborhoods in the surrounding areas to keep people out basically. And the show is really, really hard to watch. Um, after the fourth episode, and actually right. they made the four, the first four available. Uh, then I stopped and then they made more available. By the time I got to the six, I couldn't take it anymore because it's just so aggravating. It's heartbreaking. Everybody on the, in the show has PTSD um, from some kind of emotional mm. trauma, even Alison Pill, who plays the, the villain. Um, everyone has PTSD from life, basically. And so it's a really interesting uh, show. What I really, really liked about it is the way they shot it. It's kind of a Hitchcockian style. It reminded me of the birds. If you remember the birds, they would show a close up of her face and her reaction and uh, following closely a character through their eyes and just the, sh the way they, the shots are aligned with the mood of the character. So it's really, really cool how they shot it. I really, really like the look of it. I got a little bit of a, like the Hitchcockian. It reminded me a little a bit of um, the neighborhood at least. Edward Scissorhands, you that in the neighborhood, the neighborhood where everyone's oh, yes. like, yeah, so it gave me a little of that feel as well. So it's really nicely shot. 
really nicely done. Um, but yeah, it's a hard show to watch um, because the Emery's are going through such PTSD from living in North Carolina. Uh, things happen there that are horrible. And then it follows them and it just affects them mentally. But you're rooting for them. You're like, stay strong, stay strong. <laughs> because you really want yeah. them to succeed and stay in that neighborhood. So yeah, I mean, check it out. It's really eye-opening. Um, like I said, it's very heartbreaking. So luckily, I think they're only releasing one one at a time. So you'll, mm -hmm. but I, you can't binge it all because it's just way too much. Emotionally, it's just way too much. It really, it really, it really weighs heavy on you on on the viewer. I think. Mm, interesting. Is the neighborhood named like? Is it an actual LA Compton. neighborhood? Yeah. Compton. Oh, it is Compton. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I mean, every, everyone who knows in LA, Compton now is mostly people of color. Right. So it's an interesting history and you hear, you know, there's, like I mentioned, there's real estate involved and their motives for doing what they're doing. So, yeah. and one of the shocking things I learned um, in this, and it's true because I looked it up, they would charge black families 20% finance charge. Really? Double what they would charge regular, regular folk. Wow. So 20%. I was like, <gasps> oh my God. Yeah, yeah, that's was like, ridiculous. Wow, that's what they charge now for credit cards, and that's—I mean, that's ridiculous. Wow. So, yeah. So check well, it out. That's really interesting. Yeah, my family is from LA as well, and I think kind of the same with Inglewood. Like that was an area where my mm -hmm. grandparents lived, um, and now it's yeah, it's different than what it was before. So um, interesting. Hey, it'll be interesting to learn about I'll your own neighborhood. One at a time. Yeah. Exactly. One at a time. I, you know, like, I'm, I, like I said, it's stylistically, it's, it's beautiful, but uh, the themes behind it, it's just really, really the ugly truth about um, America, especially in the mm. 50s. Right. So. Interesting. Well, oh, something yeah. that I watched um, that came out on Tuesday that's also a little bit hard to watch is a short four minute short film, but also an advertisement called Save Ralph. And this is streaming on YouTube for free. I mean, look at that face. Oh, that's Ralph the rabbit. And he is voiced by Taika Waititi. And this whole short was um, put on and funded by the Humane Society International. And they had this idea to create the stop motion animated short film um, as part of their campaign to end cosmetic testing on animals around the world. Most places have stopped this practice because it's inhumane and devastating and so soul crushing. But surprisingly, there are some places that still test on animals. And obviously this film is kind of a, a lighthearted way to get people's attention. They're drawing you in by these really cute characters um, which were actually created by the same um, puppeteer as Wes Anderson's Isle of Dogs, this guy, Andy Gent, who is really incredible, really, really talented. So if you see a similar Wes Anderson style in this, that's why, because it's made by the same guy and company. Um, but it's such a great movie. It, there's a, The cast, too, is great. There's voices by Taika, like I said, uh, Ricky Gervais, uh, Zac Efron, Olivia Munn. Are just some of the people that lend you know a line or two to this really good cause and it's tough to watch it's really sad um but when you realize that yeah there are still places in the world that test you know cosmetics or sunscreen or toothpaste on animals and rabbits it will maybe make you think twice in just the the reasoning for that and you know if there's anything we can do to kind of stop that I think this film will prove that we should attempt to. Uh, one thing that's kind of funny is Taika had tweeted yesterday, this is this quote, and he says, this is a cool thing that's coming out soon. If you don't watch it and love it, then you hate animals and we can't be friends anymore. <laughs> so, oh, it's so Taika. It's so Taika. So if you don't watch this, you hate animals. I didn't say it, Taika said it, so. Oh man. You've been warned. <laughs> and what is that on again? On YouTube? Um, this is on YouTube. Yeah. So if oh, you just okay. search Save Ralph on YouTube, this will come up. It's really short. It's four minutes. It's definitely worth a watch. And it's um, yeah, it's a good one. Interesting. I'm gonna go check it out just so the because of the cute bunny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
really interesting. Really short, you said, how long is it? Four minutes, like not oh, even wow. just about. No yeah. commitment, then. you just go watch it. And exactly, you watch it, brushing your teeth, you know, with your animal free, cruelty free <laughs> toothpaste. I'm gonna <laughs> so, go check. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's so cute. Okay, I'm gonna yeah. check that out. Yay. All right, so I have two, um, in case you missed it, that's what we're moving on to next. Um, first, I'm gonna be talking about Chaos Walking. It just arrived on PVOD. And I'm also finally caught up with the flight attendant. I had to see what all the hype mm. is about. So Yes, tell I'm me, sorry. I haven't seen it yet. Okay, so I'm gonna start with Chaos Walking. So Chaos Walking uh, was in movie theater, so in case you missed it, now you can rent it um, on stream on digital platforms. And it stars Tom Holland, Daisy Ridley, uh, Damien Bashir, David Oyolo, Mads Mikkelsen, Nick Jonas, and I think a few more people that I left out. But it's a it's an action movie, but there's a lot of comedy in it. Um, like I mentioned, it's Daisy and Tom Holland. And basically, the premise of the movie is uh, there's this. It's in the future. There are no women around. Apparently, they've gone extinct. You really don't know why. You've heard several different um, reasons for it, but nothing's ever really clear. And then here comes Daisy Ridley's character, Viola, crash lands on the planet, on this planet, and she. And let me. Oh, let me explain first. The men here, for some strange reason, their thoughts are seen and heard by other people. So you'll see like a halo kind of when they, they're thinking things and Tom Holland, what the funny part is that Tom Holland's always not to, is trying not to think about things so people don't hear his thoughts, but he can't help it. Like he has no filter. So that's pretty funny. And, uh, and so when Viola lands and she, can, she sees what's going on, um, she's trying to hide, but the men find her. And so Tom, Holland, uh, Tom Holland's Todd decides that he's gonna be her savior. And so she, he takes her on the run and then it becomes sort of this hilarious, um, getaway story. And that's probably the only saving grace of this movie um, because at first it's a, it's a strange place. You don't really understand, okay, so why are men men's thoughts out in the open? Like there's really no explanation for it. It's just like, that's how it is. And uh, so that's kind of a weird thing to get over. But once you start the adventure with um, Daisy and Tom Holland, it's actually funny because he's trying to keep his thoughts. He hasn't, he's never met a girl. So you can imagine, like all boys, he his thoughts just keep coming out, and she keeps hearing them, and it's it's just it's kind of funny. It becomes a, a comedy almost, and it's directed by Doug Lyman. So he, this guy knows action. He's done Born Identity, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, Edge of Tomorrow, and tons of other um, action movies. So the action is pretty good. Like I mentioned, it's just a weird vibe. Like you don't really understand this world, why things are the way they are. Then in the movie, later in the movie, you get a little bit of the answers, but you still don't understand like why only men, men's thoughts are seen and heard and not women's. And I asked the, the, the writer who adapted it from his own book, um, and he gave it a plausible explanation, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, what I liked also about it is Damon Bashir stars in it. He's a Mexican actor. And I'm really glad they, they hired him they cast him as Tom Holland's dad. So I think we're getting beyond labeling people because he's a Mexican actor. He has a bit of an accent, but they don't make a big deal about it. Like there's no rhyme or reason. I mean, there's, he's just a dad. And so, and he's, he also, he's also in Godzilla versus Kong. And again, he plays like this playboy type um, CEO of a company. And so I like the fact that, you know, Hollywood's getting expanding uh, beyond just names or nationality. So I think that's a, that's a good thing um, about this movie. And so, yeah, I mean, it's an okay movie. I don't think it's gonna be for everybody. I, I watched it at home. So I don't think in, in the movie theater probably wasn't, wouldn't have been worth it. But if you like yeah. Tom Holland, and then I know there's a lot of Tom Holland fans and Daisy Ridley, I think you'll enjoy their chemistry together um, because the movie itself is a little weak because like I said, there's just mm -hmm. too many, um, elements that just don't make sense. Even when they explain like where we're at and what's going on, it just really doesn't click, but you're yeah. invested in that relationship. So that's a reason uh, to watch it. What about the dog? Cause that, that same breed of dog is the dog that I have. I'm oh. so curious, how is the dog's performance? 
Oh, of course. Exceptional. Exceptional. Great. But, you know, there's one scene. <laughs> so. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Okay. Moving on. <laughs> Moving on. All right. And then my next one is The Flight Attendant. Everybody was talking about the show when it came out. And I just never watched it. Um, and then finally, I, uh, when I was watching all the Godzilla movies and Kong movies, I, of course, it popped up. And so I was like, oh, yeah, that's right. I'm going to check that out. And the hype is real. I binged it, I think, in two or three days. But again, it's a little too much because um, speaking of Chaos Walking, this character played by Kaylee Coco, um, Cassie, she is Chaos Walking. Like This girl <laughs> is a mess. Oh, no. And that's what's annoying about the fact that she keeps getting into trouble time and time again. And she's an alcoholic. And so basically what happens is she meets this guy on the plane, they start flirting, and she um, takes his offer up uh, for dinner. They have a great night, great night, one night stand. She wakes up the next day, he's dead. Somebody slashed his throat. So what does she do? Instead of calling the police, she hides evidence and takes off. <laughs> so and there goes the adventure. And she does everything wrong. She goes to, this, uh, to investigate more about his family, even after she was told that they're very dangerous, they're criminals, and she just gets into all sorts of trouble. She gets drunk, she gets together with people she barely knows. And I mean, it's a good show, but you're just so frustrated that she makes all these wrong decisions. But eventually they end up being the right decisions, I guess, it's so weird. Mm -hmm. But I think you're invested because you're like, what the hell is she gonna do next? Like she keeps making her situation worse and worse. But I think that's what the the uh, the attraction is um, to this series, and also starring um, is T R Knight and Rosie Perez. She even has her own kind of B plot, and she kind of envies Case Cassie because of the lifestyle. I guess she envies her life because she's so carefree and she'll sleep with anybody, and so she gets a little jealous, and so she gets into her own literal trouble. And I think that might be the second season. Um, because I know they announced the second season. I'm like, how could they possibly have a second season? But mm -hmm. by the time I get to the end of the series, you know, you know why. But she's great as well. I'm glad that they took the time to focus on other characters. And the show gets a little weird sometimes because the guy that she slept with, the one night stand, she ends up sort of like falling for this guy. And so she talks to him, like he guides her through the adventures, which is very weird. Um, so it, it got a little, little weird in some points, um, but it's riveting. Um, I like the show and I mean, I highly recommend the theme song. It's so chaotic. It matches the show. It matches like Cassie's brain yeah. because I can't listen to that show, to that theme because like, da, 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 and oh, it, I mean, listen uh -huh. to the theme song. And that's basically like the life that Cassie is, is leading. Yeah. It's um, triggering. It's triggering, so like I can't listen to that theme song because it's just so chaotic of a sound. Um, and oh, and also starring is Michelle Gomez. Most of you will know her from Doctor Who. She played the first female master in that, um, and she's also also in Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. She's great in here too. I just like her. Every time I see her, she has like this um, this look about her. I thought I pulled up a picture, but I guess she's not here. But she's just so good. Like you would, and she plays an assassin on the show, and you would be afraid of her just with that look. <laughs> If looks could kill, she's got that look. Mm, mm -hmm. So she's like really, it. she's always really good in everything she she does. So I really enjoy her work, and like I said, it it really takes the time to develop these characters. And there's some twists and turns that you don't see. Well, there's one that I I did see coming, but there's some other ones that you don't see coming. So I mean, the hype is real. It's it's really good, and Kaylee Coco does a really good job to play this this person whose whose life is just a a, a big old mess. And so we'll see. Season two, she keeps to her promises. <laughs> nice, yeah, I've been seeing billboards for that outside of my house, and so it's a sign. If that wasn't a sign, then this is a sign that I need to watch it. Yeah, it's only eight episodes, luckily. Oh, nice, okay, oh, that's easy. I can yeah, but it's eight chaotic episodes. But yeah. <laughs> it's good. I just like the way they fleshed out all the, the women characters, especially. It's really strong. The FBI who are after her, led by women. So mm -hmm. it's really strong on the female front. So this is what I really, really liked about it. Nice. Yeah. Oh, good. Good, good. I like that. Well, I have another actually. So going into our favorites, 
section. Um, this is a film that is written and directed by one of my favorite female filmmakers of all time, Miss Miranda July. And the movie is called Kajillionaire and it is streaming now on Amazon Prime. I love this movie. I was so bummed. I was gonna see it at Sundance earlier, well, last year. And then I got sick <laughs> at in Park City the second to last day I was there, pretty sure it was COVID, but that wasn't a thing at the time, so yeah. we didn't know. Um, so I had to skip it and I, I did ultimately watch it, yeah, when it was out in um in theaters or you know, a little before that. But Kajillionaire tells the story of a family that is based in LA and they're a family of con artists. There they are on screen. We have Robert played by Richard Jenkins, Teresa played by Denver Winger, and their daughter, Old Dolio, who's played by Evan Rachel Wood. And that's just, I think, the best character name I've ever heard. Old Dolio <laughs> is so just <laughs> random. <laughs> and it makes no sense, but it's great. And that's very much a Miranda July move is to just put something quirky and weird in, in there. So. This is a family of three who skim their way through life by basically scheming and stealing and forging. And they do this because they think that society is phony and foolish. They have like a Hayden Caulfield, Holden Caulfield sort of uh, outlook on life that just people are phony and they're the only ones that truly get it and understand it. Um, so during one get rich quick scheme, they actually ran into a woman who they later befriend named Melanie. And this is played by Gina Rodriguez. And she, for whatever reason, really likes this family and really likes what they stand for. And so she joins them on their different schemes and scams. Um, the characters here, they're all, for the most part, really unlikable, but sympathetic. The parents are one thing, they're the most unlikable, but you can kind of see why in a way. Um, but Old Dolio, hands down, is just the most interesting character I think Miranda July has maybe ever created. Evan Rachel Wood plays her so well. She's so awkward. She's so guarded in this character, but Ultimately, she just wants to be loved and it's a love that she never got from her family and she ends up finding a love in Melanie. And um, she, it, it kind of goes back to that saying of, you know, your friends are your your chosen family. You know, you're, it's not like the family that you necessarily are born to or the ones that you have to consider family or the closest to you. Um, so yeah, at its core kajillionaire, it's a story about lonely people who ultimately will just let their guard down in, um, in hopes for a human connection. It's really good. The music is great. The score is composed by uh, Emil Mosari, who also did the score for Minari and Last Black Man in San Francisco. So you know it's going to be really good and really heartfelt. Um, you kind of want to just give, if you watch this with someone, you'll want to give that person just a big hug after this movie because it kind of leaves you with the feeling of like, oh, I just want to hold someone right now. And watching this during lockdown was definitely challenging because I watched it alone. So <laughs> if you have someone to watch it with, even better. If you don't, um, then I'm going to send you a virtual hug right now <laughs> that you can just replay after. <laughs> but it's really good. Yeah. Streaming on Amazon Prime right now. Oh, I can go watch it then. I was waiting for that movie. I heard some good things about it. So I was waiting uh, for it to land somewhere. Oh, nice. So I guess I'll go check that out next. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amazon Prime. Well, here's your hug in advance. <laughs> That's why yeah, how I hug people. Cyber hug. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Cyber hugs, yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, if you need to lift your spirits up, I have another sort of class, not a classic, but I love this movie. I don't know if it's uh, PC in this day and age, in this woke uh, era, but next I'm talking... Tropic Thunder from 2008. It's uh, streaming right now. Amazon Prime. Everything's on Amazon Prime. Mm -hmm. um, I think they just added it. It's Ben Stiller directs himself. Jack Black, Robert Downey Jr. It's a great to cast. Matthew McConaughey, Steve Coogan, Danny, Bri Danny McBride. And just for the hell of it, watch Tom Cruise in disguise 
as a sleazy pimp looking producer named Les Grossman. And there's a dance in there that's infamous. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. It's the most fun Tom Cruise you'll ever see. I wish he's, I wish he's done more of that kind of stuff, but he probably just sticks to Mission Impossible. Um, but basically the premise of the movie is um, all these actors, they play self-absorbed actors who set out to make like the most expensive war. And then they get caught up in the real thing. And it's a hilarious, hilarious movie. Like I said, I don't know if it's PC now, Robert Downey Jr. is in blackface but he's hilarious, um, but they make the point, I think they hit their marks as far as like the commentary behind it. Um, and I think it's kind of genius. I mean, it, the third act gets a little messy, but the first two acts I think are, are really good and it's action packed. And it's just a fun group of actors um, in this show, in this movie, and it's just fun. Um, like I said, I don't know, I haven't heard any anybody trying to cancel this movie. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> uh, not yet. But I think it's just a lot of fun. I just rewatched it, I think a few months ago, maybe during another quarantine movie that was just playing on, on TV. And I watched it and it's a really, really good time, I think. Um, but like I said, there might be some sensitive parts in there, but they address it. They address the whole black face and they have a character who keeps asking him like, why are you doing this? Like, they can just hire me, <laughs> that kind of a deal. <laughs> So it's right. funny with commentary. So if you have not seen the movie, I recommend it if you want to have a really good time. It's just fun. Uh, I mean, not J Jack Black's character isn't the best because he plays a drug addict and he just plays it over the top. But you know, some people like Jack Black over the top. Hmm. So I don't know. Have you? Do you remember the movie or did you see it? Gosh, I saw it. I think back when it came out. So I ha oh. I don't remember much of it, but I know like some parts. And Jack, yeah, Jack Black. He he's kind of hit or miss for me. Mm. in some roles, but this one, yeah, I think I liked the movie as a whole, as opposed to just like his performance. Yeah, I think it's Robert that. Downey Jr. is probably like the best character mm -hmm. in the movie. And he stays in character the whole time. And then in the end, uh, when he goes back to himself, you're like, oh, he's boring now. <laughs> <laughs> right. Go back. Go back to what you were. Right. Wait, that, that came out fun. in 2008? Yeah, I can't believe it. Oh, so long wow. ago. Wow, yeah, a really long time ago. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I don't know if now, you know, it's PC because there's so many, there's a lot of stuff in the movie that's not very PC. But yeah. I think, like I said, it's that they're addressing it in the, in the movie. I think when you, when you address it, it makes a point. Other right. than just, you know, doing it just for shock value. Right, right. Yeah, I don't think it would be made now. No. So I, I guess it's considered a classic in that sense. Yeah, like so it's it considered a classic, just, just in terms of like <laughs> having a good time watching a movie. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sure. So all the depressing movies were what we were talking about. I know. Gosh, were these all depressing? I think they maybe were. Well, that's why I'm always happy when I find something that I can watch and be like, oh, I don't have any emotional connection to it. I just laugh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, that's yeah. my goal for next week. I'll find one that's funny. Oh. <laughs> Well, I want to go check out that that uh, was was it Jack or no? What was it cartoon? Oh, the animated... Save Ralph. Save, save Ralph. Ralph. That's right. Save Ralph. Yeah. Well, hopefully, I won't be sad. I know. Same. <laughs> I mean, is it is, is a cute? Is it cute, but also like sad at the end? Or well, it's only sad at the end because it's a real problem that exists in the world and it's still ongoing so i mean they don't necessarily the film itself or the the ad itself isn't like sad sad but just knowing that that happens is, is sad yeah so you've been yeah. warned kind of like them back in the 50s yeah. and 60s and exactly whatever goes on today <laughs> exactly right well, if right. you are watching at home and you have any comedies you think we should watch <laughs> to change the mood, please Line up the mood. in the comments. Yes, we'd love to see them. Um, yeah, we'll be back next week. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you then. Until next week. And there's our, uh, uh, our, at, our Twitter handles if you want to yes. write to us. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everyone. Bye. Have a good weekend. Bye. Okay, bye, Morgan. We'll <laughs>